To assess your true blood sugar level, it is not enough to take a fasting glucose test once. Sugar levels are constantly changing, and the test result will only show a snapshot value. Endocrinologists place a lot of importance on another test, glycated hemoglobin, for a reason. A normal glucose test can be inaccurate, because it only determines a snapshot value. But glycated hemoglobin shows the average blood sugar level over the past three months, which is a more important indicator of carbohydrate metabolism. Now we will tell you why this analysis is so important, how to decipher the results, and how glycated hemoglobin affects the body. It is also referred to in medical documents as glycosylated hemoglobin, glycohemoglobin, hemoglobin A1 or more briefly, HbA1. The results of the test can determine if you have diabetes and accurately assess the risks of developing it in the future. If you have elevated sugar and are already taking steps to lower it, a glycated hemoglobin test will determine how successful your efforts are. When glucose penetrates the red blood cell and combines with hemoglobin, glycated hemoglobin is formed. In a sense, it can be called broken, spoiled, or candied hemoglobin, since it then ceases to carry oxygen and becomes useless to the body. Now the important thing is that the higher the sugar level and the longer it stays, the faster glucose spoils hemoglobin, and the more of that spoiled hemoglobin accumulates in red blood cells. Thus, the percentage of cumulative glycated hemoglobin reflects the average glucose level over the past three months with high accuracy. This time frame was determined by scientists taking into account that red blood cells in the blood are gradually renewed. One red blood cell contains 270 million hemoglobin molecules. Glycohemoglobin levels are determined as a percentage of total hemoglobin in the blood. A result of 4 to 5 and 6 tenths percent is considered normal. A result between 5 and 7 to 6 and 4 tenths percent indicates pre-diabetes. At this stage, with the proper approach of a doctor and lifestyle adjustments, sugar can be lowered. A result of 6.5 percent or higher indicates the presence of diabetes mellitus. A result above 7 percent is considered dangerous. A glycohemoglobin below 4 percent indicates hypoglycemia that is, reduced glucose levels. If you are used to estimating your blood sugar levels in standard units, millimoles per liter or milligrams per deciliter, rather than in percentages, use this table. The glycated hemoglobin reading is labeled with the abbreviation HbA1, and its corresponding mean glucose level is shown in the two cells below. For example, if your HbA1c was 5%, it corresponds to a glucose level of 101 mg per deciliter, or 5 and 60 millimoles per liter. Elevated glycohemoglobin levels lead to the formation of free radicals, chemically active molecules that damage our cells. First of all, they damage the membranes of red blood cells, which causes them to stick together, increase blood viscosity, and impair blood flow. In addition, Glycated hemoglobin causes inflammation and damage to the inner layer of blood vessels, so that they actively form atherosclerotic plaques that lead to cardiovascular disease. The test can give a false result if your hemoglobin level is low, so you should make sure you are not anemic beforehand. Pregnancy, recent blood loss, blood transfusions, and kidney failure can also skew results. Your endocrinologist may prescribe additional tests to give you a detailed picture. Most often doctors are interested in the results of the glucose tolerance test, which evaluates the body's response to glucose load. If you are over 45 years old and have normal blood sugar levels, it is recommended to create blood for glycohemoglobin every three years, if you have diabetes, at least once a year. Regardless of age, monitor glycated hemoglobin. It is recommended if you are overweight, high blood pressure, heart abnormalities. There are relatives with diagnosed diabetes, lack of physical activity. 
The results of this study are interpreted equally for men and women, regardless of age. The menstrual cycle does not affect the result. The test can be taken at any period. Women may be recommended for this study given the presence of polycystic ovary syndrome, a history of gestational diabetes, and the birth of a baby heavier than 4 kilograms. For more accurate results, it is recommended that you refrain from eating for 2 to 3 hours before taking blood. For 30 minutes before the study, do not smoke, do not overexert yourself physically and emotionally. Blood is drawn from a vein for the test. Today, about 422 million people in the world have diabetes. The number is expected to exceed 783 million by the 45th year. 90% of patients have type 2 diabetes. Moreover, most people live with this disease because of the untimely treatment of the doctor. After all, its symptoms may not appear for a long time. Often, a person learns about diabetes many years after it starts, facing complications, heart disease, vascular disease, and other organs. This is why monitoring glucose levels, particularly through glycated hemoglobin testing, is critical to preventing this disease. This content is for informational and educational purposes only. Consult with a doctor or healthcare professional before following any recommendations provided in this video. Tell us about your experience in the comments and subscribe to our channel.